Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We're here again to talk to ourselves, to have fun together as it is and look at the issues that are surrounding us as Nigerians and Africans. Okay, it's The Breakfast Show, this day, the 30th day of uh, August 2024. And we're very glad to get to this point, the last working day of the month. Tomorrow will be 31st and uh, the final day of the month. So we're glad to have made it to this point and we're glad that you're also able to join us today. On the show, we'll be looking at the honoring of the invitation by the police by the NLC president. And he says after that, we can't be intimidated. And that is Joe Ajiro uh, talking about his invitation to the police uh, headquarters. CSOs express concern over continuous detention of protesters of NBAT governance and other protests. Uh, that is our second hot topic for this morning. Of course, as usual, we are going to bring you top trending issues. And then we are going to go to the press to see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. Right now, let's take the quote of the day. And when we return, we return with Top Trending. Stay with us. The purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experience. The purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experiences. That is according to Eleanor Roosevelt who was the first lady of America from 1933 uh, to 1945. Eleanor Roosevelt gave us that quote today. The purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, and uh, to reach out uh, without fear for newer and richer experience. Okay, so uh, today you're being reminded that you're here in this life to live it. Some people go through life without actually living life. Their, their, their entire life is fear. Uh, the good book says that why be afraid? Why worry? Why are you having anxiety? Even the birds of the air have something to eat. Uh, the flowers in the, in the bush have, uh, they are dressed more than some people that um, are, are, are spending a fortune to make sure that they get themselves dressed and all that. So why worry? Live today. Explore. Live to the fullest experience whatever you need to experience because life is short. Uh, but this does not mean that telling you that you should live your life without fear means that you should do things that uh, uh, either you will regret or you will be remembered for the negative uh, reasons. That's not it. But explore life as much as you can. Uh, dive into the deep end, as they say, uh, because when you want everything to be perfect before you can delve into any venture, you may never ever get into that venture. So live your life, experience what you can, uh, live without fear and be sure that tomorrow will take care of itself. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow, today. That is an issue that you should uh, leave for God because he alone is the one that can grant you your next moment. Okay, so what are you doing today to make sure that today counts, the experiences of today count, and um, you have stories to talk about uh, tomorrow because you lived today. Uh, do not wait to live tomorrow because uh, today is all you've got. This moment is all you've got. So ask yourself how much you're doing to live that life which you are in this earth to do, to live. Okay, so that's our quote for the day from... Uh, uh, the amiable um, Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of America, and a political figure in her own right. In the 1930s to 1945, he was uh, the first lady. We'll uh, take a break from that and go to our top trending issues. The first one is the Federal Competitions and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, has issued a one-month moratorium for traders and market stakeholders to reduce the prices of goods and eliminate exploitative pricing practices. Executive Vice Chairman Tunji Bello highlighted the issue of uh, unreasonable pricing 
market, citing an example of a fruit blender being sold for 944 thousand nine hundred and ninety nine naira in lagos compared to one hundred and forty thousand naira in texas usa and warned of strict enforcement after the moratorium on the section 155 violators of the pricing regulations could face severe penalties including substantial fines and imprisonment if found guilty to be by the court rather market stakeholders attributed the high prices of factor or to factors such as uh, increased transportation cost insecurity, multiple taxation, and high import charges, and called on the government to address these underlying issues. Okay. Uh, very, very laudable. I quite understand where Tunji Bello is coming from. I quite understand what the frustration is. Uh, some people are t exploiting uh, the condition in the country, and what they will tell you is that's how our Nigeria is. You know, Nigeria of today and all that. Uh, but you, you go to some places, people who bought from the same market as these people who are saying that is how our Nigeria is, are selling that same product for lower. In fact, in some places uh, that are closer to the market, the prices of certain goods are higher than the people who come from farther off to buy these goods from that same market to go and sell. Uh, I understand that as well. But, you know, when a witch flies in the night and, you know, is electrocuted by, by the high tension, it is not the high tension that killed him. It is the person who gave him that witchcraft that killed him. Because if he didn't do that, it means that he couldn't have fl flown in the night. He couldn't have been flying all around when people were sleeping. Uh, if, if you know, you know. So the traders have expressed um, frustration in some things that the government has a hand in. Things that the government can, can do better in. Multiple taxation. Uh, cost of uh, production, the fuel price, which has uh, made transportation a, a, a neck-breaking thing, and so many other things. So if the government is saying that it is one month they are giving to the people who are selling whatever they're selling in the market to reduce their prices or face the consequences, I hope in this one month, the government also will look at the taxes and reduce. The government will look at the cost of transportation and reduce it. The government will also look at so many other things, the, uh, the challenges that the marketers have raised and make sure that they bring the prices of these things down or the, the challenges in these sectors down. Otherwise, that will be a policy that will not work. Quote me. Because if I am harvesting products from my farm and I'm supposed to transport these things to the market with a cost of 2,000 Naira, but now I'm transporting these things for 10,000 Naira. There is no way I'm going to sell those things and not recover my transportation and the cost of production and everything else. So to go um, and say that, okay, you have to reduce your prices and all that, what difference will it be from what the military administration was doing? Price control, they enter the market, something that is sold for 10,000 could be sold for 1,000 Naira or for even 200 Naira. The, the, the army will be in the market flogging everybody and all that. So what are you going to do differently that will make the people sell according to the prices you have set? And it was a very poor example, if you ask me, if you're comparing something in America to that of Nigeria. So when they buy it at 140-something thousand in America, what is the cost of transporting those things to Nigeria? What is the import duty that is supposed to be paid at the ports um, in Nigeria? Because you're, you're looking at dollars. Okay, so what, I, what is the transportation from the ports to wherever you're going to put this thing to sell to other people? What are the factors? Why are you even selling this thing? Maybe you're selling this thing so that you can, you can sponsor your child to school. What is the school fee now? Uh, what is the transportation or the rent that your child is going to pay while in school? What uh, Other things are just tied to this small thing that you are selling. And so how would you blame the person who is selling it at 900 and something? 
So if you buy it at 100 and something and you're transporting it or you're paying import duty for as much as that or double of what you bought it from America and then you are putting all other factors, how do you expect that person to sell this product? I'm not standing brief for the people who are, who are really inconsiderate. I know there are a lot of those who are inconsiderate and they tell you that it is uh, the Nigeria that we are. For instance, you go to POS on the island, for every 5,000 naira or below, you pay 200 naira. You go to the mainland, for every 5,000 or below, you pay 100 naira. The same charges that they, 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 they are charged at the bank when they collect this money to come and distribute or to come and sell back to the people or to come and make sure the people can get, is the same charges that uh, you find everywhere. So if it is for every 1,000, you are charged 10 naira, for instance. Uh, so a POS operator goes to the bank in, in Lekki or in VI, he's charged 10 naira for every 1,000 naira, if that is what is being charged. The same charge applies to the person on the mainland. So why is the one on VI saying it is the Nigeria we have seen ourselves and he's charging 200 naira? That's an example I give to you. Uh, why would a, a, a bottled water seller sell it for 200 or 250 on the island and on the same island you go to a supermarket uh, which which has everything which maybe a lot of people see as the place that should sell higher and they're selling that same thing for 150 naira or 180 naira why you say this is our nigeria it is not nigeria it's you but Having said that, and, and said that there are people who are wicked in, in, their, in their dealings, we're also asking, what will the government be doing in this one month that they've given to sellers? Will we see a reduction in the cost of transportation? Will we see a reduction in the cost of the import, uh, the uh, customs duties and all that? Will we see a reduction in the taxation? Uh, will we see a reduction in any other challenge that these people who are selling has expressed? or have expressed. So we don't know. Until the government does its own, own part, it has no moral justification to tell anybody to reduce prices. You can only appeal to them, but you cannot say after this, we will force you to do this. We are going to give you penalties and all that because everything hangs on, or at least you, the government, are giving the people the excuse. They may have a very wrong excuse, but you gave them the opportunity to have that excuse. That, that's my humble opinion. Uh, nobody sent me to talk this one, but that's my humble opinion. Do your bid and show us that you've done your bid. And then every other, even the Nigerian people will, will know what to do to the people who are wicked to them. We are the ones that are causing our own problems. Yes, we agree. But what are you doing? So if you're comparing America, what things are in America, how hard things are in America, can we do the same to our political leaders, the ones in America and in the ones in Nigeria? Can we do the same to any other sphere of our lives in, America, in Nigeria and say we are doing just like America and not just uh, single out the people who are selling things at exorbitant prices? Because if I'm selling a commodity, Everything in my life is tied to that commodity. That's my business. I want to use that to pay my school fees. I want to use that to dress. I want to use that to, uh, to oil, as it is, my um, uh, extended family and my immediate family and all that because everybody is expecting some, some uncle somewhere, some auntie somewhere to do something for them. So if he is in business, he uses that money to do whatever he's supposed to do. So everything is hanging on that business and then you're making it so difficult for me. What do you expect me to do? Whatever happened to market forces that uh, the present administration was talking about, we will float the Naira and market forces will take charge. We will, we will remove subsidy from, um, we'll remove oil subsidy and market forces will take over and all that. So what happened to the market forces, which means it has failed. All that policy, all those policies that were hanging on market forces to make the prices crash, they have failed. That is an indictment on the government. So until the government does their own part, this policy will not work. I'm not saying may not work, but it will not work because, because everything hangs on what policies the government brings. The people who are wicked, you know yourselves, do the right thing. But the government, give us an excuse to... to to call out these people and say they really are wicked. Otherwise, it's just um, uh, an effort in futility. That's what I think as a person.
Well, let's move to another one. OPC urges Tinubu to restore uh, pipeline contracts Buhari terminated. The Odua People's Congress, OPC, has urged President Boda Tinubu to restore the pipeline security contract that was terminated by former President Muhammadu Buhari, emphasizing the OPC's previous success in securing pipelines and reducing vandalism. OPC President Wasiu Afolabi stated that reinstating the contracts would help tackle unemployment in the southwest Kogi, Kwara, and Edo states, while also addressing pipeline vandalism in the region. Afolabi lamented that despite the Yoruba people having two presidents and 32 governors in the last 25 years, the OPC has not received any recognition or benefits for contributions to democracy, calling these an injustice that needs correction. He also criticized Nigerian politicians for their self-serving behavior and urged the government to address issues such as poverty, insecurity, and lack of basic amenities, while also listening to the demands of Nigeria Labour Congress and end bad governance activists. I really don't know what to say to this. Um, I don't know if anybody who contributes to democracy should be gratified. I don't know about that, but I understand what the OPC is saying. I at least the call on the government to listen to the people, the voices of the people, like they say, uh, Vox Populi, Vox Dei, voice of the people, uh, the voices of God, or the voice of God. So the government should, should, should also listen to the people and make sure that the people feel important, they have a sense of belonging. Democracy is about having a voice in governance. So if the people have no voice in the government, the people are this, the critical stakeholders. When you talk about critical stakeholders, it's the people. But if they don't have a voice in what goes on in their country, it is not a democracy. We've said that time and time again. It's at best a civil rule which does not necessarily translate into uh, being a democracy. A monarchy is a civil rule, it's not democracy. Uh, there are so many other uh, examples of civil rule that necessarily are not uh, democracy. democracy. So if we don't have a voice in what is going on in our country, then that's not a democracy. Just a few people uh, deciding for us what should be done. So if the people are are frustrated and they are airing their views, they are saying, they are talking out loud, then we, the government should have no choice but to listen to the people. So for the end bad governance, for instance, there are a lot of things that were enumerated and the response of the government is not going down well with uh, a lot of people because uh, instead of saying, okay, we'll look into what is happening, everybody is being labeled as being opposition, they are being sponsored, they are this and that. Hunger is not sponsored by anybody, except maybe the government is sponsoring hunger. Uh, the hardship we are facing is not a sponsored thing. It's a spontaneous thing that comes to you to rebel or to, or to, to, to say, uh, to cry out if you're really, really hungry. It just comes naturally. So the government should let, learn to listen more to the people. The era of saying we're having um, a, a meeting a village meeting or what do they call it, where the governor comes to speak to the people and people are given specific questions to ask the governor and uh, town council meeting or town hall meeting, yes, that's what they call it. The governor comes from his high office to come and talk to the people. And when it gets to the, to the town hall, instead of the people who are feeling the pains to talk, it's the same politicians uh, that are close to the government that will be talking and they will be asking questions that are given to them. I've not seen a town hall meeting where the, the people who are really feeling the bite are the ones that are asking the questions and expressing their frustration. It is those people, A-list people, the elite, that will ask the questions that are tailored uh, to the benefit of the government. And I don't see how that works. I don't even see the reason why a governor should hold a town hall meeting. I think the representatives of the people should hold these town hall meetings and talk to their people in the language that they understand and take the findings to the governor or whoever else is higher up. I don't think it makes any sense for a governor to come and talk to my, the people in my village and then have the people who are supposed to sit back and listen to what we will be saying ask the questions. It doesn't make sense to me. Maybe it does to everybody else, but not to me. I don't expect the governor to come. I expect my councillor to come to my village. I expect my House of Assembly member to come to my village. And, uh, and 
I also expect my senator to come to my village or House of Reps member to come to my village and not the doctor. So that the councillor takes it to the local government chairman and the local government ex chairman escalates it to wherever it is supposed to uh, be escalated to. Uh, the, 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 the House of Assembly member comes and, and gets, gathers all the information and goes. But now you find out that the senators do not even come to their constituencies. They have a constituency office uh, that one person is manning. That same one person is living with him in Abuja and only comes home once in a while. Uh, to do empowerment when it's close to election and so many other things. So we don't get to see them and all that. So people should have a say. And that say is unfortunately what is always coming up when people are protesting. We had the end bad governance recently. We had the end SARS uh, a few years ago and so many other things. It shouldn't always be at that point that the government will hear what the people are concerned about. But the, race, the OPC raised an issue of pipeline vandalism and uh, siphoning of oil and so many other things, the insecurity around that, and called for the government to restore that security uh, network that was uh, abolished by the previous administration of President Muhammadu Buhari. Now, the government, what they need to do is to look at the gains, if there were any gains at that time, and say, okay, uh, because of that, we will continue or we will do it in a, a better way than it used to be. If it is because it was private and not a, a government player that was uh, taking care of the pipelines, okay, do it in such a way that uh, we will have government's presence more. I, I don't know how to put it, but check for the alternative measures that will work better than what is, what is happening right now. The NNPC said... Uh, they just discovered about 75 oil wells in one week or two weeks. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, this is not good for us. The amount of oil that is being stolen every day by, by non-government non players and even the government players uh, is so much that uh, we, we may not be able to, to cope in the nearest future if we don't nip it in the bud. So if the alternatives are to engage people from the Niger Delta to take care of those in the Niger Delta, engage people from the Southwest uh, to take care of the pipelines that run across the Southwest. And every zone that these pipelines run across, uh, you engage people there. If that will work, please go ahead and do that. But for the, for the, for the um, acknowledgement that they, ha they have contributed to democracy, I don't know, I have mixed feeling about that. Uh, because everybody in Nigeria who has ever voted, who has ever stood up for democracy, has contributed to democracy. Should we start giving medals to everybody? Or we should start giving medals to every group that says that they have uh, contributed to democracy? I don't know. It should be a collective effort. It should be something that will give us pride that we are even part of the process that has brought democracy and has sustained democracy till now. So I, I don't know what to say about that one. I think um, OPC should should be um, a little bit more modest uh, regarding their contributions to democracy because every Nigerian uh, has contributed to democracy. But but that's my personal take anyway. Uh, ECOWAS 6 end to residence permit system is the final uh, top trending issue that we are taking this morning. A joint committee of ECOWAS has called for the abolition of the residence permit system arguing that it obstructs free movement and contradicts the region's economic integration goals. The residence permit system originally introduced under the ECOWAS Treaty of 1975 is now seen as outdated and un counterproductive, according to the committee's draft report from their delocalized sittings in Banjul, the Gambia. The committee highlighted widespread non-implementation of the ECOWAS free movement protocols at regional borders and recommended robust sensitization campaigns and training for immigration and custom officers on community texts. The committee also urged the ECOWAS Commission to ensure full compliance with the implementation of signed community texts by member states, particularly focusing on the ECOWAS biometric identification card. Hmm. A good move, I think. How many people... Uh, this, this, this countries that we have now is a colonial uh, contraption, it's a colonial um, arrangement uh, 
uh, for instance, why, why would Benin Republic not be Nigeria? Why, why would we not be brothers? Why are people who are speaking Yoruba and have the same customs as Yoruba not be part of the Yoruba um, nation? Because some white man came some, some day and said that, okay, from this point to this point, you are not brothers anymore. You are now enemies. So if you are coming to my place, you have to show documents, you have to do this, you have to do that. You know, why is a part of Cameroon that speaks English and has the same culture with Boki people in Cross River State and some others with, uh, with the Bakasi people not be Nigerians? Because someone somewhere just came and said that uh, you are not brothers anymore. Why will Niger, uh, that is almost like an extension of Nigeria, not be Nigeria? Uh, because a white man came and told them that you have to speak this language and you have to see yourself as a different person and all that and all that. Why should the African person have borders that you cannot walk freely into your neighbor's country and do any transaction and all that? Why is that so? So if ECOWAS is thinking about uh, abolition of these uh, residence permit and other things that hinder the free movement of West Africans at least, um, and then Africans in general, uh, then it is a good thing. Why would we not be able to move from one African country to the other and do trade and do anything that we want to do that is wholesome? I'm not saying you go there and commit crime and all that, but uh, you want to go there, you want to visit, you want to do business, you want... Why should we need too many papers to do that? Uh, I don't know if it's the same thing when you go to the European Union, if you have to have so many papers to move from one place to the other to do business and all that. But whether it is obtainable there or not, we as Africans recognize brotherhood. We recognize family. We recognize a lot of things that there in the West do not recognize. So I think it's a good move. I hope that uh, this uh, free movement we've been talking about in West Africa will continue or will, will be strengthened so that we can have that bond uh, between African countries and we should really see ourselves as brothers and sisters. So it's a good move. Let's hope that uh, the future is brighter than the present right now. Okay, that is the final top trending issue. We'll take a short moment. Uh, when we return, we're going to go straight to the papers and see what made it to the front pages of our national days.